right. Whoa, let's get. You there, Pistol Pete? Hey, here I am. Here I am. I'm fixing. Uh, this is not my perfect scenario, but you can see me. Yep. You can see Way you. back. Yep. Sorry, I'm in the car. I'm actually waiting to get my COVID test. Oh, really? <laughs> oh, one of those. Days. Oh. Hey, uh, you're, you're in and out, so I'm. Can you hear me better? Is this better? Yeah. Yeah, it's better. That's better. Okay. All right. This is uh, interesting because I've never done this setup before. So we're going to be a little, it's going to be a little clunky. Uh, I'm used okay. to doing my, my wine setups where it's just me, a face, a face, and then I'm not like, I'm just throwing bottles up. <laughs> well, I uh, don't have any bottles with me, but usually I would. <laughs> Um, well, actually, uh, before I start, I actually have a cool little wine uh, I want to show you. It's um, it's uh, Fatasca Negra. It's a Romanian red. It's um, it's rem I'm still trying to find something wrong with it. <laughs> it's it's uh, you know it's like five ninety nine, and I'm like it's pretty good. It's like an easy drinker. So is it grapes or is it a fruit wine? No, no, no. It's it's a real wine. <laughs> It's not. It's not. You know. It's not the uh, Welch's grape juice. Um, the Mus Moscato and Muscat wines. Yeah. No. No. It's not a sweet wine like that. No. It's a. Um, it's an indigenous grape to Romania. Um, think of it as. Um, it's think of it as almost like a Beaujolais, where it's you know very light body, uh, tastes much better chilled than um, you know than uh, kind of a room temperature you know type serving temperature. So it's. You know, we've got uh, put onto it uh, with one of my wine programs a while time ago, and I just can't shake it. <laughs> nothing wrong with that. No, no, nothing wrong with that. Um, so, folks who are just joining, I am very far away from my phone, so I cannot wave to you, nor can I make any. Um, I can't see even see any questions. So, uh, <laughs> so bear with me. Um, so I, uh, I am joined by Hamilton Stolpin, one of the founders of Crooked Butcher. Uh, they are a new member of our Founders Circle. Uh, thank you very much. I'm happy to have you join us. Thank you. And as he mentioned earlier, he's uh, waiting to get his COVID, the COVID uh, shot, right? No, the test. Oh, the test. Ooh, okay. Yeah. All right. In the parking lot, they said about an hour wait. Ah. Yikes. Okay. Well, good. Um, well, this is, um, I'm going to highlight some of the uh, items that, uh, well, one of the items that actually I ordered, but let me talk a little bit about Crooked Butcher, Crooked Butcher and where are you based, uh, a little bit about the products and where the, um, where the meat is sourced from. So uh, if you talk, uh, first, let me do my intro, folks. Hello, I'm Pete from North Shore, Great American Nosh. Uh, we are living by the mantra, eat, drink, and savor. And as in the last 12 months, I think we're doing a little bit more of that than we, sh we, ne we need to do a lot more of that. And um, part of our uh, subscriber offering that we just launched is we have what we call a founder circle, where uh, a very select group of partners and friends and vendors of mine um, are offering subscribers of Great American Nosh some substantial savings on food, meat, ice cream, CBD. Um, I have some other new announcements as well, but Crooked Butcher and the Butcher's Blade are our newest members of our Founders Circle. So thank you very much. And if you, uh, Hamilton, uh, introduce yourself, and obviously we'll talk a little bit about Crooked Butcher. I'm Hamilton. I'm one of the partners of Crooked Butcher. Um, we are, our distribution is based out of Chicago, central part of the country. We use a third generation butcher to handle the cutting and processing for us. We actually purchase cattle, which is different than a lot of mail order uh, meat places. Um, we do import directly from Japan and Australia for the Wagyu's, but we've also purchased full, you know, 100% full blood Wagyu cattle in the U.S. And we're looking at to continue to buy more. 
um, to take it one step further, not just buying others and reselling it is, you know, we're checking the quality of it. When they slaughter, if it doesn't meet our grade, we don't buy it. We get the next cow and we don't put it up for sale unless it meets our minimum scoring. Um, mm -hmm. Our partners is for the prime beef, you know, it's premium Midwestern prime, Ohio, Illinois, Indiana, okay. uh, no hormones, no additives. You know, there people joke around there's prime and prime plus or upper prime in the U.S. USDA prime is one grade, but there's inside of it unofficially. There's, you know, a couple different levels of prime. But we only mm -hmm. sell, and sell the highest level of prime, which we call upper prime. Yep. Uh, we actually have some choice that is better than most prime that I've seen places. Um, Got it. It's very um, subjective, like a lot of things, mm -hmm. um, versus the international where they actually do lab tests and you know, the IMF scores. It's much more you know, detailed and strict, um, mm -hmm. a little more lenient. So we decided to you know, bring that to market last year. Uh, we're in the process of opening a few physical locations for retail stores. Okay. Um, so that's... Is that, it's going to be in the Chicago area or... Uh, no, we're looking North Miami Beach. We're opening the end of April and looking in the Charlotte market. Open mm -hmm. summer and we're looking at a few other, maybe New York City, Brooklyn. Uh, we've talked to some people up there. So mm -hmm. we're to grow and expand and be different by buying our own cattle. Yeah, I was, I was going to just ask the next question. So that differentiator, buying your own cattle. So you're sourcing directly from the farmer themselves, right? Yeah, I have partnerships with three ranches, mm -hmm. um, small ranches. You know, the one, one of the ones, our primary one, they do two head a month of the full blood mm -hmm. Wagyu. You know, little family, husband, wife, and kids in Indiana. Uh, mm -hmm. Great quality. You know, they're great to work with. And, you know, we hand select it. You know, we slaughter it, we hang it, they send me the testing, and I see it hung. I, once we get the testing results back, we decide if we're going to buy it or not, if it meets our minimum grade, which for the full blood Wagyu is A4 grade. Mm -hmm. and, and, you know, we go from there, and they've worked great with us. Our first cow didn't make it. It looked amazing, but didn't score high enough. So mm -hmm. you know, then you'll have another one in two weeks, and we'll just yeah. go until you're happy. And um, as it is it pasture raised and during the winter do they just is it mostly grain finished after that and it's six uh, day grain fed for full blood okay. Got um, it. australian Got it. some wagyu in the u.s you will get you know 100 200 maybe 300 day grass fed and then finished a couple hundred days grain fed we do mm -hmm. pure japanese style which is 600 plus days of grain feeding Oof, okay i didn't know that <laughs> that's interesting that's why they're um, so big yeah oh my goodness that's Wow. <laughs> and um, when do they, when do they, um, how long do you usually raise the cows to, to about like 18 months, 24 months? Um, uh, you're a little, right around two years. Yeah, you know, two years. 600 okay. days of grain feeding, you know, you're just under two years and, you know, they're nursing and then it's never exactly 600 days, sometimes 620, 624, um, mm -hmm. the weight of the animal. You know, a true full blood Angus cow is two to three times the size of an Angus cow. Okay. So, wow. Okay. They're big. Um, yeah. Oh my goodness, they are big. I, I'm I'm familiar with you know Herefords um, uh, up here in New England. I don't see much. We don't have much Angus. It's mostly Herefords that we run into in terms of cattle. Um, and all right. And uh, well, let me take a break for a second. And I'll give you a break. I'm going to actually um, I'm going to show everyone the cut that I got. Um, that I ordered. Um, it's a Denver cut. Um, so let me uh, show you folks what this Denver cut looks like. That looks beautiful. Um, and so that's one piece of it. So uh, let me let me ask you this. Why did uh, why did you want to do this? Because you obviously have other businesses. You're obviously an entrepreneur. Uh, I mean, obviously an obsessive entrepreneur with other businesses. Why did you want to go do into this venture? Because this is a different venture than, you know, the barbecue sauce and obviously the blades and so forth. Uh, honestly, I kind of fell into it. My business partner was looking at doing it. And, you know, somebody I became friends with over the last year or so. And, mm -hmm. you know, we were talking. He asked me if I wanted to get involved. Mm -hmm. you know, so we talked about it. And, you know, we have different strengths and weaknesses. You know, so we complement each other on that. And I say, go, why not? It's worth a shot. 
<laughs> you know, everybody else is stuck at home with COVID last year. Let's, you know, see what yeah. we can do. You know, you go to the grocery store, you can't find meat half the time. You yeah. know, I'm in Char right outside of Charlotte, which is still a top 20 market in the country. I can't mm -hmm. physically go to a store to buy Wagyu from Japan unless occasionally Costco has it, which is of all the random places in the world. Um, but outside that, there was no place to get premium meat. Yeah. Other than yeah, mail I order, and I'd been mail ordering. You know, I'm a big boy. I'd like my meat. So knock <laughs> <that's> the, <laughs> well, the middleman out. Become the middleman. Yeah. Yeah. Um, all right. And um, so I showed everyone, I showed everyone that Denver cut. We'll talk about that particular cut in a second. So um, we talked about Prime and the Wagyu. Um, and you have other cuts as well. I mean, I think you have what? You have lamb, you have, we had toy, we didn't even talk about what else Australian Wagyu is. So talk a little bit about the other offerings as well. So, yeah, we have lamb, we have domestic hormone, natural veal, uh, mm -hmm. all natural domestic pork, pork belly, pork chops, pork sharp, pork chops. Um, as you said, New Zealand lamb, uh, rack of lamb. We're rolling out next week, preseason chicken breasts that are frozen. Um, two breasts to a, to a package frozen with five different seasoning blends you can choose mm -hmm. from. I'm trying to think of what else. We keep adding stuff, to be honest with you. People keep asking, so we keep working on it. Uh, yeah. We have homemade sausage now, hot and sweet Italian. It's ground every day, um, which is nice. And mm. ta taco meat. Not like yeah. ground beef hamburger taco meat, like chopped steak. You know, the yeah. little you know, three quarter inch cube steak for tacos. Mm -hmm. um, and so that's kind of where we're at. We do have, as you said, the Japanese Wagyu, Australian Wagyu, the American full blood. Um, so we have quite a variety, you know, the different types of Wagyu. There's a big misconception of what Wagyu is in this country and what gets labeled it. You know, USDA says you only have to have 40% bloodline to be considered Wagyu. Mm -hmm. um, that would be F1. F2 goes up to, I don't want to misquote, I think it's 72%. And mm -hmm. F3 is 93%, I believe, off the top of my head, uh, before yep. you get to the full blood Wagyu. So okay. most of your Australian is F1, F2, sometimes F3. Um, you do occasionally get full blood, but it's very rare. In the U.S., there's about a dozen ranches or farms that do full blood. Um, some are incredible. Um, some are just good. Um, and you know, it's a process, it's expensive, you know, them raising these cattle that are not cheap. And, you know, sometimes it's like anybody, sometimes the kid doesn't come out good, you know, you get <laughs> bad seed, bad apple in the bunch, and, you know, you just went to the $10,000 cow. Well, yeah, but we don't kill our kids. So we're, <laughs> so, we're <laughs> <you're> <laughs> I'm going to get myself in trouble. <laughs> um, all right. Um, and then um, let's talk about that Denver cut. So, folks, I just showed a Denver cut. Um, I just ordered this from uh, Rooker Butcher. Uh, I got this uh, within a few days of ordering. Um, you know, I, from what I read, the, you know, the term Denver is really was more of a marketing term. It really doesn't come from Denver. Um, talk about where it comes on the cow and, and why – you know, why would this be a tender cut versus other, other cuts? It comes from the front shoulder of the clod, which is one of the biggest muscles on the cow. Your chuck roll goes in there. Mm -hmm. So it's broken. It's the center of it. There's, I'd say on a 50-pound or 30-pound clod muscle, 30 to 50-pounder, you might get eight Denver steaks. Okay. Um, All right. So it's, as you said, it's not a filet. It's not a strip. It's not a ribeye. Um it's kind of a made-up steak, not by us, but by the industry. Yep, okay. Um, but it is extremely tender. Um, it cooks quickly. You know, I do a, you know, reverse sear and a quick sear with butter, or, you know, you could just do high heat a couple minutes on each side, depending how you like your steak. Um, mm -hmm. But for me, for the price, it is the cheapest steak we sell, even at Prime. Yeah. And then, you know, I'm a ribeye guy. I love my fatty meats. But... <laughs> If I'm not going with a big fatty ribeye, I'm going to go with a Denver. You know, it's a third of the price, a quarter of the price. And, you know, to me, it's almost as good. Not quite as fatty and flavorful, but, you know, if you're taking that heart of the ribeye, the filet of it, or a strip, I personally prefer it over a strip, but that's just my personal preference. Well, strip strip is more lean, I think. 
I mean, from what I'm looking on the marbling on this, I think a strip is definitely leaner than, than this cut. Well, a strip's leaner intermuscularly, but on a prime, you'll still have it, but it has the fat cap on the outside you usually see her, yeah. versus a dead bird doesn't have the fat cap. Yeah. So. All right. Got it. All right. I, and what I'm going to do here, folks, is I'm going to cook this up um, using my cast iron. I'm going to use a little olive oil. I'm going to do the, the sear. And, um, and uh, since I'm always here to learn, um, and I have my certain ways of doing steak, but I'm here to learn from you. So um, what are we doing, like two or three minutes per side for the this Denver cut? Yeah, I, I can't really tell how thick they are, but yeah, usually two to three minutes per side with a little oil and butter. All right. Oh, you can, you can hear the sizzle. Look at that. Live TV, folks. There we go. Got it going. You know, and All you... right. What's that? Oop. Did you have a question? Oh. All right. We lost, I think we lost him for a little bit, so I'm just still going to cook, folks. I've never cooked this um, cut before, so I'm going to just – Sear this for like three minutes a side, um, I think, as he recommended. Um, but you could finish off an oven as well. That's another option. Um, I don't have this too high because I, I really don't want to burn it, per se. But really, you're just trying to get a nice char. Um, and he might be getting his COVID test. So um, we're going to keep cooking here, folks. Um, I, I am so far away from the phone. I could, wa I could wave at all you guys. Thanks for joining us. Um, I cannot uh, make any, uh, I can't even read, it's too far away, I can't even read the question. So bear with me. Um, we're cooking this Denver cut. Um, this is one of our uh, newest members of our Founder Circle. Our Founder Circle is an exclusive to our subscribers um, for on, on our website, where uh, subscribers will get uh, exclusive, and, uh, exclusive discounts to um, whatever products and services my valuable vendors and partners. And these are hand-selected folks uh, I'm not a, I'm not a group on. I really don't believe in that. I believe in um, working closely with the people that I want to uh, work with. And obviously I, I want to share that with my subscribers as well. So I got this Denver um, cooking. It's probably, I should probably get this heat a little bit higher. Um, we're going to do about three minutes a side, get to the 650 mark, and then I'm going to flip. Um, and um, so just to let you know, um, I do like to drink Red wine uh, with my steak. This is not necessarily a perfect red wine with steak. This is a Fatasca Negra, which is a Romanian red, very light body. I would prefer a little bit more heavier Cabernet, but again, I can't plan everything. So um, this is the first time I've actually using this setup uh, for my Instagram lives. Um, using a, we have used a different one before, but it was from the side and it was kind of useless. Um, and uh, we normally use, we actually have a different setup for my wine and tree program, which is um, coming up on Monday. So that's a programming note for you folks. And I have actually have a, a dog that smells the beef here. So, um, and hopefully Hamilton can rejoin us, but um, he did get across a lot of information for us. Um, go with the crookedbutcher.com. That's where you're going to see all the um, many offerings that he has. Um, I'm actually interested in that rack of lamb. Um, that looks really good. Now, Wagyu is very expensive. Again, this is going to be a bit of a splurge. Oh, he's coming in now. Uh, I see I see him now. Okay. I got him, folks, so bear with me. Sorry about that. Mm. That's okay. You gave me a time to ramble on and fill some dead space. Did you flip the steaks? <laughs> I am going to, yeah, I'm actually at 650 right now. Yep, I'm ready to do it now. There we go. Beautiful. And you say we're going to cook these to like medium rare? Um, yeah, I do medium rare. All right. So you can put in a 350 oven, 400 oven. Yep. Okay. All right. Oh, to finish off, is that what you're saying? Yeah, put a little butter in there and then finish them off. Okay. All right. Let me. Um, or however you want to do it. It's your steak, not mine. <laughs> You're eating it, not me. <laughs> uh, no. um, 
My wife, my ex, my wife actually likes these a little bit medium, medium okay. well, and I'm terrified to cook them that long. But um, I, I might sacrifice one of the steaks for her. So yeah, we'll have to do that. Go to medium. All right. <laughs> I think that would be good. We'll let that one cook a little bit longer. Um, and um, I think I, mean, I, I talked about savings, and I think what was the uh, savings you were going to offer my subscribers for the crooked picture? Was it? Seven percent, I believe. Seven percent, and for some of the qual the cuts of meat that you do have, that's actually a substantial savings because, uh, as you mentioned, wagyu is expensive. Um, this is all prime or above, so definitely, definitely a, a big savings to you, um, subscriber. And we do ship everything via two day air standard, so but you can upgrade to next day air, and we only mm -hmm. ship Monday through Wednesday, so nothing gets stuck over the weekend. Oh, okay. That's perfect. See, look at that, folks. All right. Um, and um, just to let you know, he's not lying, folks. <laughs> um, I got my box, and it was uh, definitely with a styrofoam covering and a pack, and obviously the ice pack, and it was frozen, which was perfect. Uh, that way, at least I know I can actually don't have to cook it that night when I get it. It goes right in the freezer, and then when I'm ready, it, um, I defrost it uh, in its own sweet time. So... Yeah, most That's people. Actually, yeah. Sorry, most people don't realize you can freeze meat twice, as long as the seal's not broken on the package. That's right. That's right. Purposes. That's right. I've I've actually done that. Um, where a lot of times what happens is you go to the uh, butcher, and whatever they had was previously frozen. Now it's not frozen anymore, and then you could buy it and actually refreeze it and then use it again. Yeah. So, as long as it's not hasn't been sitting around too long. So. And just make sure it's airtight, vacuum seal it, or something similar. Mm -hmm. All right. And I'm going to take a little test, my instant read. Uh, that thin one. 102? The thin one's got about 123. Oh, wow. Um, 122, the thick one, that's probably about 190, 95. Mm -hmm. oh, so actually, that's pretty good. They're cooking the right pace for you to have two different temps. Yeah, that's, well, and yeah, and I put them on at the same time, too, so that's kind of interesting. Good. Um, smells fantastic in here. I definitely had to uh, dismantle the uh, fire detector. <laughs> um, I'm guessing you salt, pepper on it, maybe a little garlic. I did. I did. Um, for me, I actually, I really enjoy the flavor of beef without masking it. So I basically stick what to what we call in the barbecue world the Dalmatian rub, which is equal parts salt and pepper. And I dry salt um, ahead of time. So for these steaks, I only did about two or three hours ahead of time. A little salt, a little pepper on both sides, and I put it in the fridge. Um, I do that a lot with my roasts as well. But those are obviously 24, 36 hours. So. Yeah, a little dry brine helps with the tenderness. Oh my goodness, it, it helps tremendously because if you, the, good, the thing with dry brining and a lot of people don't understand is not, it doesn't just help with the tenderness. It actually helps if you overshoot the, um, the temperature, you know, your internal temp when you're cooking. So let's say you, you overcook this to 150, you know, you're, you're still going to be fine um, when you eat it. it. That's how well that dry brining works. Yeah. All right, so let's take a little temp read. Uh, that thick one's, uh, thick one's being a little stubborn. Yeah, the thin one's probably a 132 at this point, 135. I'm going to let that one sit for a little bit. Um, <clears throat> any other, um, and actually, you know what? We might as well tell everybody about your other businesses too, So <laughs> since you're on the line. Um, other businesses, we have Bear Smoke Barbecue, which was started last January. Um, all natural barbecue sauces and rubs, no preservatives, no additives, gluten free, no high fructose corn syrup. All yep. made in small batches in North Carolina. Uh, as we talked about, Crooked Butcher, and you know we soft launched the Butcher's Blaze. Yep, that's the bear. Yeah, I got one. I still have some left. You know, as I said, we're saying we soft launched the butcher's blade. 
uh, with high carbon knives. And in about five weeks, our Damascus lines are coming out. Um, everyone is handmade, so they're all slightly different, including mm-hmm. the handles and everything. So, you know, it's a true handmade custom thing versus just going overseas and buying 500 of the exact same thing, putting a stamp on it. We actually, everyone's handmade and slightly different. And you said they were they were uh, cast, is that right, or for- forged? The the ones right now and the ones we're launching are 350 layer Damascus. Mm-hmm. I hate to run. They are calling me in to get my nose swabbed. Uh, okay, that's fine. Well, Thank we're going to wrap this up. Thank you so much for joining us, Hamilton. And uh, we'll get you tied in for another show uh, sooner or later. And I'll let you know how this date goes. All right. Well, I appreciate him coming on board, and uh, I'm almost done with my um, almost done with my steak here, folks. This is going to be interesting. Um, I've never had this cut before, and that's at 150 now for um, for this thin piece. There we go. There we go, folks. I'll take. I'll show you what we're looking at here. Ooh. And I only did uh, extra virgin olive oil. I did not use butter. I have some butter here, but, you know, I don't know. It might be overdone. I might try it, but. Yeah, we're about 146. So I think we're going to leave that at that. We're going to take that off and let that rest. And then we get the stick piece left. And I'm, I'm waving to everyone. Hello, everyone. Nice. Thanks for joining us. We got a little smoke in here. That's why I dismantled the uh, fire detector. Um, I am too far away from my phone to actually touch the phone. Um, so we're actually going to, um, I can't even barely read. So anyway, um, we're, we got some nice steaks here going. That's the Denver cup, which I, again, I am very unfamiliar with. I'm going to actually cook this to about medium rare, which is about 120, 125. Uh, that's the way I like my steak. Um, again, it's up to your personal preference. This is the Denver cut. Um, as I mentioned before, I received it within two or three days after ordering. It, it, he did mention it comes second, um, second day air, and it is um, frozen and has freezer packs. So as long as it's not held up over the weekend, that's fine. I did get a phone call from the post office saying, hey, you got to pick this up because um, they see perishable on the box. So anyway, that's just some uh, interesting logistics. I have some red wine, so salute everyone. I hope you guys are having a wonderful evening. It's about seven o'clock here where I am, um, where it's almost time for dinner. And I am almost ready for my uh, steak. Hope you hear that sizzling, ooh. About 120, I'm gonna give that a few minutes, so. Um, and I can't even touch the wave, so hopefully everyone's having a good old time. Um, just to let you know what I'm drinking, just for kicks and giggles, is uh, Fataska Negra. This is a Romanian red wine that I featured on Wine and Tree um, several programs ago, $5.99. Again, I'm still trying to find something wrong with it. Uh, it's definitely won us over here in our household. Uh, it's always nice to have a nice house, couple house reds rotating through your uh, wine rack, if you even have one. <laughs> you, barely, you barely keep enough wine in here to keep a wine rack. Um, so, and we also had, just let you know, folks, we have a uh, wine and treat coming up on Monday at, I think, 6 o'clock. We're actually going to focus on Spanish reds. Um, Emmanuel's definitely um, a big fan of Spanish reds, and so am I. Um, we've found some tremendous wine value. And, again, if you're going to have some wine, you always got to pair it with some food, and that's why we're here. We're going to let these rest for a little bit, and then I'm going to cut into it, and I'll show you what's going on. Um, just let you know, I cooked in a cast iron skillet. Um, love cast iron, a big advocate for cast iron. Again, you don't have to necessarily cook in cast iron. You can cook it nonstick. You can cook in stainless steel, cook on the grill. It's a little chilly for me to have the grill out. Um, I actually um, use this skillet a lot in my cooking, and hopefully you've seen that in a lot of my videos. And um, one thing with cast iron is, especially this La Crusade cast iron, La Crusade cast iron is it's not traditional cast iron in that it's enamel coated. So it's just solid and water. I mean, soap and water to clean it. Uh, I don't need to season it like traditional cast iron where you have to do oil, got to bake the oil back in. Um, 
less of a pain in the butt than traditional cast iron. That's why I love it. Um, all right, I am gonna um, move this out of the way so I don't hurt myself. Um, let's see if I can get a cut of my steak. And folks, this might be a little bit medium rare, but we're gonna check it out anyway. Okay, there we go, folks. All right, that is beautiful. Now let me take a little bit of bite. See what we got. Mm. That's perfect. Folks, thank you for joining us on Instagram Live. Um, we were, thank you, Hamilton Stolpen, for joining us and talking to us about Crook of Bitcher and all the wonderful offerings. Again, um, we are offering our subscribers special savings on all of his products. Uh, you will get a substantial discount for joining our website, uh, greatamericannosh.com. Thank you, everybody, for joining us. I hope you enjoyed this episode, and I will catch you later. Bye.